uh, how I fell in love with infographics. So I've been creating all my life. I even went to university to study fine arts to the dismay of my Japanese parents who wanted me to take business and get a high paying bank job. So I graduated, uh, couldn't find a job, had to go back to school and study interactive multimedia, and then I eventually found work. So I've been working in the interactive industry for about nine years as a web designer and an art director and teaching web design part-time at Humber College. But about a year ago, I felt stuck and I needed a change. So I quit my nine to five office job and I decided to go freelance. But I didn't know where to start and so I needed some creative inspiration. So I decided to tap back into my fine arts roots and start creating physical work again and also to justify my degree. So that combined with being tight on cash because I was freelance, uh, my love for the environment and wanting to save the world, I decided a good place to start would be to create some upcycling projects. So one of the first projects I created uh, was a series of paper collages that I used um, those amazing sample paper ads you get in Howl magazines that I stole from uh, my previous job. And so sometimes I would use uh, the paper as texture to create work, or I would keep the images intact and just collage them. The last one actually was created from old Christmas cards that I got that year that normally would have ended up in the recycling bin. The next project I created was a little more ambitious. So I needed a dining room table, and I thought, why buy one when I can upcycle one? So 100-year barn board that I found on Craigslist, and a uh, friend with a wood shop, tables, uh, table legs from an old table, Two days of sanding, staining, and varnishing uh, resulted in an overclaimed harvest wood table for under $200. So the reason I wanted to upcycle is because it was my appeal to create and um, cons conserve, but part of it was to make people aware. So in 2006, I came across this film, Inconvenient Truth, and it floored me. And I thought to myself instantly, how can I make every single person I know watch this film? So that Christmas, I decided to sacrifice a few trees and actually hand out Christmas cards just so I can insert a burnt copy of that DVD to every single friend and family member that I knew. And I thought for sure that everyone would watch this DVD and feel what I felt and be inspired to want to change and save the world. But unfortunately, the results were a little disappointing, and the only person with the light bulb who got it was actually my sister, and uh, everyone else more or less was inspired. So I realized the DVD incident made me think that the one-on-one -on -one didn't necessarily work and I needed to find a way to reach more people in a larger audience. So I came across this website called good.is. So it's a website that talks about social good and how to promote and teach it. And then they had this section called infographics. So at that moment I realized this was a medium I could use to share my environmental concerns to an online larger audience and and it was a combination of my analytical and creative side that produce this medium that can take data and make it accessible. So it was my aha moment. So this was the first infograph I created. Uh, Good Is has these regular competitions where they give you a topic and you have to create an infographic and submit it to them for a competition. So this topic was on energy. And rather than create an infographic full of data points on one page, I decided to focus on the one point of the world energy supply. So this actually ended up winning uh, Best Design. And the next one I created uh, was on sustainable seafood. And this one was really fun because it was a topic I chose, researched, and designed. And I did it in a nine-hour non-stop stint one weekend. The next one was on water conservation. And as you can see, it's far simpler. And I'm still relying a little heavily on text because it was still a learning process for me at this point. But after having a couple um, personal infographics under my belt, I thought, you know, I'm ready to be an infographic freelance designer. So I went to work, started getting commissioned work right away, was really busy. And I like to say that a lot of the work I did was socially minded, but in reality, it was all marketing based, ranging from posters for Guinness and Facebook, and even comparing the US versus UK stats of Pinterest users. So this is a quote I want to read by David McCandless. It says, by visualizing information, we turn it into a landscape that you can explore with your eyes, a sort of information map. And when you're lost in information, an information map is kind of useful. So whether it's conserving water or the message is to buy beer, a successful infographic takes boring data and makes it accessible. So this is a chart I grabbed from a site called Visually, based in San Francisco. And I had the honor of working with them as an off-site infographic designer while freelancing. And it shows a span of popularity over a few years of infographics online. And this isn't even including the 2011 data, which was coined the year of the infographic. So you can only imagine how this chart would explode if it included that stat. 
And as you see online, infographics are all over the place. Media sites, blog sites, they're all using it. And with anything that's overused, there's always a backlash that develops. And so I've heard people say infographics are dead. I disagree with that point. I think infographics are here to stay. I just think the ones that are used poorly will get weeded out, and the ones that use it successfully will still continue to inspire people. There are four types of infographics that I came across. Static being 2D, print or online. Interactive being online, that's user, user engagement to get the data. Motion, uh, kinetic type or animation in. And then live data, which is pulling live information into an online feed. So the one that interests me the most was live data. So one of the great examples I found online is called the Wind Project. It pulls live wind current feeds over a map of the United States, which you can't see here. Um, but it's a perfect example of data and design that almost creates something that's beautiful, like a work of art. And I find that fascinating. Another really cool example is called the breathing earth, which you'll see next. And what you can't see here is on the bottom it says, since you started watching, X number of people have been born in the world. X number of people have died in the world. And this many thousand tons of CO2 have been emitted. So the countries that are red are actually currently emitting a thousand tons of CO2. So it's a live data pull feed. And the longer you're on this site, the more terrifying the stats become because it just keeps totaling up. So being a teacher, you think that giving extensions to people and students would result in more quality work and more effort being put into it. Uh, but as you can see from this progress chart I created about my presentation, uh, the majority of the work I did was days before the deadline, regardless of the fact that Vivian approached me seven weeks ago to do this presentation. So normally I'm used to talking in big crowds of clients and students, um, but this was actually quite terrifying for me, and I wanted to thank you all for sitting through my Pecha Kucha talk. Thank you.